Hey all, I thought I would do a, uh, a lesson on Diamond Dust that uh, Jeff Beck does, but that was written by, I think, Max Middleton is the name of the, uh, the composer. And uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful tune, it has a really gorgeous melody, which seems to be Jeff Beck's thing. It's just finding and playing these gorgeous melodies. Uh, a player who just keeps getting better. Uh, just saw him in Austin recently, and he's just... I don't know. It just does. It keeps getting better. Um, the piece is, uh, uh, you know, obviously it has the melody that's played, single note line melody, but it, the the underlying chords are arpeggiated, and uh, the, sometimes it's best just to get the picking pattern down um, and kind of burn that in a little bit. The first uh, sort of chord we're going to play here. Oh, by the way, it's drop D tuning. Very important. Uh, <clears throat> first chord we're going to play uses mostly open strings, but we're going to play the D string third fret, B string first fret. And the picking pattern is going to go like this, where sixth string being the low E, of course. Uh, six, four, two, three, one. It does vary later on in the tune, but not really the pattern, only the fact that we later on we'll use only the second through six strings, but the pattern, the sequence is basically exactly the same. So starts off with that chord. And then the only difference for the second chord is we're gonna raise the C to a C sharp, same picking. to a new chord, we're going to bar the 3rd fret, and then I also have uh, the D string 6th fret, B string 4th fret. And then like with the last chord, we're going to raise one note, this time we're going to add an E in here, so the B string moves up to the 5th fret. Next chord, we're going to go all the way up to the uh, eighth fret. It's the same pattern, so we have a, a bar across the eighth fret, and then my pinky's on the D string, eleventh fret. Middle finger is on the B string, ninth fret. That one we're only playing twice; the others were four. Then we're going to play a new chord here. This is. Ring finger on the D string, sixth fret. Middle finger on the G string, fifth fret. Twice. Then we're gonna go down to this shape that we played before, but now barred on the first fret. So uh, the pinky is on the D string, fourth fret. Middle finger is on the B string, second fret. So let me play what we have up to that point. Uh, sequence we're going to move up to the 6th fret and play again that same shape. This time it's a bar on the 6th fret, pinky's on the D string 9th, middle finger on the B string 7th. Uh, Twice. Uh, next chord is going to be a bar on the 2nd fret. <clears throat> we have ring finger on the uh, D string 4th fret, middle finger on the G string 3rd fret. And because some of these chords are played, uh, or I think it's done, done on piano, 
some, you know, piano, you can stretch your voicings out with two hands. You can do some things that are uh, uh, almost or, or in fact, impossible on guitar sometimes. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to do a little hammer. We're going to do a little bit of a different kind of lick here. So I'm going to go... I'm playing the E string ninth fret, the D and G strings on the eighth fret. Then I'm going to hammer the G string... 10th fret. And then I'm finally going to play a B flat up on the uh, second string 11th fret. Kind of a new chord shape coming up here. This is uh, ring finger on the 8th fret, pinky on the 9th fret, and then I'm barring the rest. As I said earlier, some of these are a little different in that we don't hit the high E string, but you're still picking in the same sequence. Another new chord shape. This is uh, <clears throat> E and A strings on the 4th fret, and then I'm, uh, the rest of the notes I'm playing are on the 6th fret. And then we go back to the shape we've played before, bar on the 3rd fret. Pinky on the sixth on uh, D string, and then middle finger is on the B string, fourth fret. There we're switching back to picking the high E. Uh, and then the final little sequence is a bar on the tenth fret. This would really, if it wasn't for the fact that we're tuned to drop D, uh, this would look just like a uh, like a G minor seven. Uh, in this case, we have C in the bass instead. But I, it's a bar, again, across the 10th fret, ring finger on the 12th fret, D string, and then my middle finger's on the B string, 11th fret. Next shape. We played this once before on a lower fret. This is 8th uh, fret on the E and A strings, 10th fret on the, the uh, G D, G, and B string, sorry. And I'm going to drop down just a half step and play what looks like that minor 7 form again, except we're just, we're barring the 7th fret, and I have my ring finger on the 9th fret D string, on the 8th uh, fret B string. So, and that's the end of the sequence, it goes back to the first chord at that, at that point, it leads right back in. tune, especially when you add the melody to that. That, that uh, beautiful melody part. And maybe I'll do that in a second uh, video, but it's it's slow tempo, so it's not hard to uh, uh, sound that out, really. Well, although it does change changes key and such. Uh, but the chords themselves are gorgeous, and Max... Uh, came across a couple other things that he wrote uh, and he just had this cool just way of looking at harmony uh, and moving chords around was, uh, I should look more deeply into him because he, he seems like he's a pretty unique and interesting writer um, but hopefully that gives you uh, the chord part of the of the song and just again just practice sometimes the best thing to do as I said in the beginning is just get used to the picking sequence. Um, same for uh, 
Sometimes just repeat, forget about the chords and just keep doing that until it kind of burns into muscle memory there. Um, but hopefully that gives you enough to learn the, learn the tune. And again, I'll put the chords down below and maybe uh, uh, yeah, do a, a lesson on the melody for the song. Enjoy!